the AC dimmer circuit. Uh, it's a multi-channel Arduino based dimmer circuit. The wave that you see at the top is a complete AC cycle. You'll notice it swings both positive and negative during each cycle. Uh, this makes AC fading a little bit hard in that you can't use just a regular transistor to do the switching and this is mainly because the polar polarity changes 120 times a second. One device that we can use to do this kind of switching is known as a triac. In my case I use the BTA08600C for this project. Now triacs are difficult to work with in that once they're turned on they won't shut off until the next half cycle or until the point at which the voltage is zero which is identified by the horizontal line that runs through the sine wave. So to achieve fading what we need to do is we need to know when we're crossing the zero point we need to wait a given amount of milliseconds and then tell the triac to allow the signal to go through with the load which in our case is an incandescent bulb. You'll notice that in the three lower waveforms uh, a greater amount of time after the zero cross is waited before the triac is fired and this is what your load would see. Um, in this case the waves on the top would result in a brighter light and the waves on the bottom would result in a very very dim light. There's many ways to achieve a zero cross detection. I decided to use a IL250 which is just an AC opto isolator. There's uh, two LEDs in it that light up, uh, one on each phase and the other side is just an NPN transistor. I hooked it up uh, in the following configuration with two 22K resistors on the input or on the, the AC side, the line side, and a 10K that interfaces the Arduino. This is the schematic that I used for the triac and the load being the light bulb, uh, except you cannot use a MOC3031. I originally thought I could, but I didn't realize that it was a zero cross detection opto isolator. And basically, all that does is it won't even turn on until it reaches the zero point. And um, given the nature of a triac, it won't even shut off until it gets to a zero point. So it makes good for a switch, but it's impossible to do fading with it because you need um, you need it to be able to fire whenever and shut off at the zero cross to get proper fading. So in this case, we need to use a random phase opto isolator. And after after learning that, I ended up switching the MOC3031 to a MOC3020 random phase opto, opto isolator. This is a test that I originally performed with a solderless breadboard just to see if it would work. This was followed by a design that I made in PCB Wizard for a three channel fader. Note that the values aren't accurate and if you're making your own you need to follow the schematic that I showed you previously. This is the copper printout for it. There's two boards on one. I always make more than one just in case something gets messed up. This is the board. Start of the design. and uh, The components soldered on. This is a, the first basic switching test. No fading.
This is the code I used. The three arrays at the top are set up like a timeline that play from left to right. This helps me visually determine what uh, the end result is going to be. I do not suggest in your code using um, an interrupt to fire on the zero cross. Instead, you'll notice in my loop statement I just have a if digital read. Um, and that's saying if it's true or if it's uh, a value of 1 or if it's on, then go to the zero cross function. When the zero cross is fired, it continually samples the amount of microseconds that have passed since um, the zero cross occurred. And this is accomplished in the while statement that you see. Uh, once a specified amount of time has passed for each given brightness for each light, the triac for the corresponding light is fired and the light turns on and it'll stay on for the duration of the half cycle because the triac won't turn off. And this occurs 120 times a second. The actual value of the brightness is kept track of and it's compared against the desired value and that's defined by the timeline array that you saw at the top. And the actual value is incremented or de decremented accordingly. And this happens in the leftover 133 microseconds um, before the next zero cross occurs. You can see those are the if statements and I'm sure many of you will pick that apart because I'm sure there's always a better way but that's how it's achieved.